I'm Marina Kim and these are the latest news from Kazakhstan. The law on the leader of nations signed by the chairs of both parliament's chambers, Kasim Jamar Takayev and Ural Muhammadjanov, as well as the Prime Minister Karim Masimov, is void and has no legal force. Moreover, many of the amendments to legalize the new controversial status contradict the current legislation, say Kazakh lawyers. For the first time in history of the independent Kazakhstan, the key legislation of the country was not signed by the head of state but rather by the chairman of both parliament's chambers and the prime minister. According to Kazakh lawyers, instead of a birthday gift, the newly proclaimed leader of the nation received a disservice akin to a coup. Not all published materials are laws. This was just an opinion of both chambers and the current situation actually looks like a coup, since the president of the country was completely ignored. They simply assumed his powers, which they have no right to do. The lawyer says that the approved without president's involvement amendments on the leader of nation contradict the current legislation. For example, assassination attempts against the leader can be punished with up to death penalty. At the same time, last July, Nazarbayev signed amendments to several laws specifying that capital punishment may be imputed only for terrorism crimes which caused loss of life, as well as for the atrocities committed in wartime. Human rights activist from Astana, Tala Sagumbayev, is not surprised with these contradictions. The law was passed one way or the other. Obviously, this was a well-orchestrated show. It looked like Nazarbayev was forced to accept the status but was actually refused it. In the end, though, the bill became the law in a month anyway, no matter if it was signed by the president or not. In off-record conversations, many other Kazakh lawyers negatively assess the new laws, finding them written with mistakes. At the same time, no one is brave enough to talk openly about it. After all, the law on the leader of nation has been already enacted and now fines for bad-mouthing the president can leave even the best of lawyers bankrupt. Swift justice in just eight minutes. Journalists who organized a protest against the law on the leader of nation on June 16th were charged for disturbing public order in Almaty. Sergei Duvanov and Andrei Sviridov will have to pay $500 in fines each. The Kazakh judiciary system has proven a rule of law over the International Civil Rights Pact. Almaty City Administrative Court has admitted independent journalists Sergei Duvanov and Andriy Sviridov guilty for organizing unauthorized rally. Mentioned journalists went to the city's main square on Wednesday to show a protest against the nation's leader bill. Though police didn't react during the day they came in their house the same evening and arrested. The court session was appointed for 11 a.m. today, however, it started two hours late. We have 40 minutes before lunch. If they won't start it now, we will have to wait until the lunch time. We should start while waiting for slacker judges. When it started, journalists weren't allowed in. If they say let in, you will be in. Eventually, journalists were allowed in, but the cases of Sviridov and Duvanov weren't considered as one, and the hearing itself lasted eight minutes only. This is stated by current legislation, and in any case, you are violating it. If you do not agree with this, not only you, but also the prosecutor's office. So you're accusing me for you organizing an authorized rally? Yes, I accuse the Kazakh judiciary prosecutor's office in violating its own laws. You want to know how? Journalists had to pay a fine as they couldn't prove the superiority of the International Civil Rights Pact over the local legislation. He is absolutely right from the judiciary point of view. We have the fourth article that sets the international pacts ratified by Kazakhstan to have priority over national legislation. The legal decision is subject for lodging a complaint. However, both journalists refused, quote, to participate in this show, end quote. A number of Internet resources may be blocked upon the initiative of the National Security Committee. One of the Internet users in Karaganda, Sergei Rasov, has sent a letter to service provider Asia Bell asking to explain why he cannot access certain websites. The answers that came via email and phone call were published on the Respublika's web portal. In response to your inquiry number TT3338, we can say that according to our provider websites Ferganada.ru, CentralAsia.ru, Respublika Kazinfo and LiveJournal.ru have been blocked by the NSC. Sincerely, Asia Bell. 
Rallies at Janajol and Kinkiyak deposits on the northwest of Kazakhstan have been temporarily stopped. Dr. Be Regional Administration and CNPC representatives were able to convince discontented employers to employees to return to their work. The negotiation trip was later, later announced by the local administration press service as part of scheduled outreach activities. The negotiators promised the workers to fulfill their key demands via six members of the top managements within 10 days and gradually raise salaries to $1.5,000. Currently, the average salary at the enterprise is no higher than 400. Employees in Kinkiyak were read the letter about the immediate dismissal of the transportation department head, Zhuma Bayotigenov. In case the demands will not be fulfilled, the workers threaten the biggest strike at several deposits at once. The workers declined to discontinue the strike, wait and see if the promises given by the deputy governor and the CNPC director will bear results within 10 days. The employees will also wait until July 13th and see whether salaries will be raised. If not, they will organize a more serious strike. In the meantime, the wave of rallies reached the Kimkia deposit. On Thursday, the number of protesters reached 400. The company management has immediately arrived to the area to settle the conflict. This is already the fourth rally of oil field workers in western Kazakhstan this year. Guess the right budget. This is how the state officials work with handling state expenses, say some senators. The government has reported and the audit chamber verified numerous facts of misusing budgetary means, although it is still not clear why this happens and the budget is not managed efficiently. The details of state money management problem come in the next report. This was Gani Kasimov's explanation on how he failed to fulfill the 2009 budget. After Finance Minister report, it appears that over 400 million US dollars of the budget remained unspent. Bola Jamishev said this is because of low productivity of budget organizations who are too slow in work and thus spending the money. Well, we're talking about the 32 out of 50 billion tenge that was spent according to the budget index. All the development programs that weren't completed by the end of last can be finished during current financial year. These are the billions of tenge that weren't spent. This indicates against all of the achievements that the government talks about. Deputies have positively evaluated the investing the taxpayers' money into state-owned holdings. Corporations emerge so quickly consuming the state budget money without any consideration of taxpayers' interests. With silent agreement of the government, including the Minister Jamishev, we can see placement of development, institutions' assets, state holdings and beneficial deposits. There are lots of figures to bring up, but when the investment fund didn't invest in new projects, the depositors saved the situation. Samruk Kazanafand is the main state asset manager that Kazakh government trusted its funds. Deputies were outraged that state officials has to be held responsible for the situation, especially when the audit chambers has provided very skeptical report. Thus, there is one question about this financial triangle, who indeed manages the state money. It is important for the government to clarify its functions. Who are you? You, as a minister who is reporting, what role does the ministry play in controlling the budget? Actually, what are the ministers have to do with it? If there is a Samrukazana fund and money is kept there, who manages the people's money? Who is in charge? Who is the main accountant? Well, the parliament is discussing who is in charge of the state money. Kazakh labor union members are addressing another question. Where is the money and why the workers have not been paid their salaries? The amount is quite significant, specifically some 612 million US dollars. Thus, employers have violated the labor rights of more than 250,000 workers. Labor rights of a quarter million citizens of Kazakhstan are violated. Total amount due to civil servants across the country made up more than 600 million US dollars and some part of it will never be paid. It appears that many enterprises have been bankrupted and means people employed in them may not really count on compensations. Lyudmila Anikeva says the company she works in owes her $7,000. She has even won the lawsuit, but the officers of justice haven't been enthusiastic. According to Lyudmila, the ex-employer owes in total $7 million just for salary of its workers. Even rallies of workers didn't change the situation. 
и ходили в Акимат. We went to local administration and talked to its head, sent about 10 letters to Nuratan party requesting help. We even reached the president's secretariat. All of them promised to solve our problem soon. In the meantime, the prosecutor's office is the only state body which is doing something about the problem. It has reported about the activities in seeking out the salary debts from employers. So far, the results seem miserable as only $60,000 were paid to some out of 6 million workers.